I hear the name John Bene Ramsey, what comes to mind immediately is injustice. Injustice in that this little girl, a six year old beauty queen from Colorado, murder has never been solved. Never. On the day after Christmas, 1996, the body of Joan Bonet Ramsey was found in the basement of her family's home in Boulder, Colorado. She had been beaten, strangled, a handwritten ransom note left on the staircase. It was the city's only murder of the year, and it instantly became the focus of a nation. Jomine's parents, John and Patsy Ramsey, said an intruder murdered their daughter after attempting to kidnap her. In an interview with CNN, they urged parents to be careful. If I were a resident of Boulder, I would tell my friends to keep Your baby's close to you. There's someone out there. Even after a grand jury failed to indict the Ramseys, to many they remain subjects of suspicion. In 2000, on Larry King Live, Steve Thomas, former Boulder police detective, confronted John and Patsy. I felt that Patsy was involved uh, um, in this death, in this tragedy, uh, and I felt uh, it had become such a debacle and was going nowhere. John, why did you agree to come on with Steve well, tonight? I mean, this is rather historic. I don't, I'm trying to remember if this, there's ever this been man, television like this. as a police officer, has called my wife a murderer. He's called me uh, 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 a uh, complicity to murder. He has called me a liar. He has slandered my relationship with my daughter. That's his relationship with John Bonet. Thomas wrote a book claiming the Ramseys were involved in their child's murder. In 2001, the Ramseys sued and a year later settled out of court. Then, in 2003, the Boulder Police Department ended its investigation and handed it over to the district attorney. The DA vowed to reopen the case but refused to eliminate the Ramseys as possible suspects. Just a month later, the DA changed her mind. A judge ruled in a civil case that an intruder most likely killed Jean Bonnet, and the prosecutor agreed, finally removing the cloud of suspicion over the parents. By that point, the Ramseys had moved to Michigan, where they continued to monitor the investigation, hoping DNA evidence would bring the killer to justice. Patsy Ramsey wouldn't live to see her daughter's murder solved. She died of ovarian cancer, but not before learning that Boulder authorities had a suspect in their sights. Patsy was buried in a Georgia cemetery next to Jean Bonnet. What else comes to mind? A botched crime scene? A murder of a child inappropriately handled, bungled from the get-go? Investigators and police being so solicitous of the family that statements were not appropriately taken immediately when police arrived at the scene. That's a very fine line to walk for police, whether to treat parents as victims or as possible witnesses or as possible suspects or as possible persons of interest. It's very, very difficult. But their main job is to solve the crime. That's the main job for police, to save victims and to solve crimes. The child beauty pageant star was strangled with a piece of rope and her skull was fractured. The day after Christmas, 1996, Mother Patsy reports finding a two-and-a-half-page ransom note on a staircase demanding $118,000 in ransom. Eight hours after that, John Bonet's father, John, reports finding his daughter's body in the basement of the family's Boulder, Colorado home. The family buries their little girl, wearing a tiny tiara, then gives an exclusive interview to CNN the following day. There is a killer on the Absolutely. loose. I don't know who it is. I don't know if it's a he or a she. I think of John Bonet, and unlike probably millions of people 
to immediately recall her dancing around in a little cowboy cowgirl outfit. You know, a pedophile's dream video. I think of injustice. I think of a little girl abused, beaten, and strangled who died alone in her parents' basement, alone in the sense that no one that truly loved her was with her. I think about evidence that was misinterpreted or overlooked, public pressure, politics, friends of friends of friends, and the case was never solved. On page one of the Jean Benet autopsy report, new information as to her exact cause of death. It reads, cause of death of this six-year-old female is asphyxia by strangulation associated with craniocerebral trauma. This means Jean Benet died not just of strangulation, but that in combination with blunt force injury to her brain. The autopsy report also shows bruises on her scalp, bruises above her ears, scrapes on her right cheek, scrapes and bruises on her right shoulder, and scrapes on her left lower back and left lower leg. The report does not indicate whether these injuries were caused by a weapon. As for sexual assault, the autopsy suggests John Bonet was sexually assaulted before she died. Denver coroner Dr. Thomas Henry says based on this limited report, there's no way to conclude whether or not Jean Bonet had been sexually assaulted more than once. I think about a little girl that was uh, objectified. Who never really had a full childhood because she was in one beauty contest after the next until she met her death. Boulder police have been criticized for their investigation into the strangulation death of Jean Benet Ramsey. Critics say police have been too slow and efficient and secretive in their efforts to find the girl's killer. Now the other investigation, this one funded by the Ramsey family, has come under attack. Famed former FBI profiler John Douglas, who was hired by the Ramseys to profile Jean Benet's killer, made a splash on TV news programs this week. He proclaimed the Ramseys innocent and said their daughter's killer was probably someone who had a grudge against her father John. But Douglas ultimately conceded all the information for his private investigation came from the Ramsey team. Criticism for his public proclamations abounded. I wouldn't recommend that any names be bandied about either good or bad. In other words, either naming a suspect or eliminating uh, potential suspects. That's been the posture of Boulder Police Chief Tom Kobe, who's still saying almost nothing publicly about the case. Police do say they have been consulting with the FBI routinely. Having to do with behavioral science expertise, uh, behavioral analysis and profiling. So they are there to help us and, and have done so throughout the case. That is the very agency where John Douglas used to work. If the private investigation by Douglas now seems less than stellar, the police as well may have problems. There are still no arrests and no official suspects. And, numerous law enforcement experts point out, the failure of the Boulder police to seal off the Ramsey house the first day of Jean Bonnet's reported disappearance might have contaminated possible evidence. Well, I think even a bad defense attorney is going to have a good time with this, but it's not a good time. It's not fun. You see, the problem we have is that everybody assumes bad police work helps somebody. Not so, he says, because John and Patsy Ramsey could be wrongly implicated by bad police work. Whatever the quality of their work, it may stay secret for a while. The county coroner will ask that the final autopsy report remain sealed for the time being. When you talked with the police, did they ask you about sexual abuse of John Bonet? Yes, say? of course they did. What did you tell them? I told them absolutely, categorically, no. There was absolutely no evidence, either physical or historical. And that's from seeing her 30 times in three years? About that. What else did they ask you? Well, they asked many of the same questions you've been asking. Relationships with her parents? Relationships with her parents and uh, what sort of child she was, if there was any uh, indication of depression or uh, sadness. And your answers? Who is appropriate? If she was sick, she wasn't feeling too well. If her mother was off getting treated for cancer, she was sad at that. 
He talked with us in the treatment room where he saw her five weeks before she was killed. Was she an ordinary kid? No, I think she was extraordinary in the amount of charm that she had and, and sweetness, I guess, is the quality that I appreciated the most. How she was doing things and with her friends here, going to Michigan with her parents. Just the fun things in life. And the beauty pageants just didn't seem to be at the top of the heap by any means. Tell me what she said to you. To be honest with you, I can't remember. I just remember it made me feel good to, to see that much happiness and niceness in one spot. Then I think of freaks like John Mark Carr, who muddied the water years later, claiming he killed Jean Bonnet. Did you ever actually meet John Bonnet Ramsey in person? Of course I did. How many times were you with her? You know, the description of my connection with her prior to her death is something that I can't discuss, and it's because uh, in knowing a child, uh, you don't just know that child. There are other people involved in knowing a child, and I had to, to protect the innocent, not the guilty. Uh, I can't respond to any details about uh, my connection with her before her death. Uh, so, but are you saying that you were actually in her company more than once? Yes. And what kind of a connection? You talk a lot about the connection you had. Was it a, a physical connection or a spiritual connection? It was a connection as in knowing her as a child. I've known uh, hundreds of children. Uh, and unfortunately, because there are other people involved in knowing a child, and I wish to protect them, uh, I can't discuss the details of, of my connection with her. It's unfortunate. I wish I could. Do you understand why that's confusing for people, though? Because you, mm -hmm. because you are very willing to come forward. You came on the show tonight. You did this long article uh, with the AJC this morning. You keep yeah. saying you want to talk about things. You want to have this normal life. But you don't answer the questions that, that people are asking you, the questions that, that you know they mm -hmm. want answered. There are why? Reasons. There are reasons, and I just, I just gave you the reason. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. It's a valid reason, and I'm sticking by it. And you know, the bottom line is, uh, answering all the questions is not what's important to me. Uh, whether someone uh, believes me is not important to me. Uh, protecting people who are innocent is important to me, and I'm going to do it at all costs. Wouldn't you wonder if someone came on television tonight and confessed to an outstanding crime that has never been solved and said, I did it. And was all the photographers came and took them, and then they found out they didn't do it. You, you know what, Larry? Were you wonder? I, I don't recall ever saying that I did anything. So that's uh, where I'm confused as to the question as well. I never said uh, I never, never said gave a did. definitive, overt yes or no to anything, and I never said I did anything. The accused has given the prosecution some leads, but they're unlikely to be enough. His confession is alarming, but it's not a confession to murder. Even if Carr was with Jean Benet Ramsey when she died, he claims her death was an accident. So by itself, the so-called confession is not enough to guarantee a conviction. That's probably why Boulder District Attorney Mary Lacey is being so cautious. Do not jump to conclusions. Do not jump to judgment. Do not speculate. Let the justice system take its course. The DA will need hard evidence, starting with proof of Carr's presence at the crime scene. How could a man in Alabama become so obsessed with a six-year-old beauty pageant winner in Boulder, Colorado, that he would travel halfway across the country to be with her and then murder her? Most importantly, what about physical evidence like DNA? Carr has already given a sample, but it needs to be matched to the DNA found at the murder scene. There were also fingerprints at the scene and the now famous ransom note. Can they be tied to Carr's prints and his handwriting? Only if the prosecution can answer those outstanding questions might it be able to convince a jury that John Mark Carr is guilty of killing Jean Benet Ramsey. This is a bombshell if this information is true. And at this point, I know the reporter reporting this from our CNN affiliated station in Denver uh, is an investigative reporter with that station who is now reporting that not only is there no DNA match involving John Carr, but that he will not be charged. Now, what's interesting is at this hour, uh, John Carr's two attorneys, the two public defenders provided to him by the state of Colorado, are still visiting 
visiting with him at the jail. This is in advance of a court appearance, what was to be his first court appearance this afternoon in just a couple of hours from now, at which time Mr. Carr was supposed to be advised of his rights. But it's important to point out at this stage, he had not been formally charged with anything in this case. Just to briefly recap, this is a man that authorities went over all the way from the state of Colorado to Thailand to pick him up based on information they received in part from emails that John Carr sent to a Colorado journalism professor. In addition to information uh, contained in that email, we also learned that John Carr, according to a U.S. law enforcement official, uh, curiously had information that had about John Benet Ramsey's body that had not been made public before, not been made public by the medical examiner or by law enforcement authorities. So at this point, it is hard to square away how it is that he evidently had that information, and yet there is no DNA match. It raises the question, is this a man who is simply obsessed with John Benet Ramsey and had access somehow to some inside information? Think of all the leeches that have grabbed onto this case and used it. I also often think of Bert Ramsey, John Benet's brother, who many people suspected of killing her, which is an outlandish theory. I mean, statistics alone show that it's extremely rare for a brother or sister, it's called fratricide, to occur. It's extremely rare. And if you look at Burke at the time, you know, he was so small and frail. There's no way he did this deed. But I think of him often to this very day and how the murder of his sister must have affected his life. That's what I think of when I think of John Benet Ramsey. The irony of John Benet's murder is that this all occurred on Christmas, around Christmas Day. She got up on what many children consider to be the greatest day of the year saw her presents, had a wonderful day at home with her family. The family went to a Christmas party at a friend's home. They arrived back home around 9.30 in the evening. Jean Monet was said to have been so tired she actually fell asleep and had to be carried to bed. Went straight to bed. Suddenly the next morning, frantic phone calls that Jean Monet was missing when Patsy Ramsey came to the front door, she had on complete hair and makeup, eyeliner, mascara, the works. It was at about 5 o'clock in the morning. The home was completely searched. Only hours and hours later did the Ramseys alert the police, oh yeah, we have this uh, additional area downstairs a wine cell. Let's, let's go look. John Ramsey and a friend of his went down to that area and John Ramsey is the one that discovered the body. So Ramsey himself volunteered to go down into that area of the home. He and his friend Fleet were there when the door was opened and the body of Jean Benet Ramsey was found. The body was covered in a blanket, which is very unusual. Random murder very rarely involved covering up the body. Um, that is almost an instinctual act. <clears throat> Have you ever seen a dog walk around in a circle before it sits down? That's instinct bred from uh, uh, millions of years. Humans, when they kill a loved one or an acquaintance, very often will cover up the body with a blanket, 
with leaves, with trash, with paper, with boxes, with something. You very rarely see the shrouding of a body that is stranger on stranger. In this case, we knew that the suspect perhaps pulled down John Bonet's long johns. So we focused on the waistband and the side hip areas where we expect their shared DNA to be left behind. We then used a careful sampling procedure where we actually scrape a fine layer of this material to try and collect all the shed skin cells that may be on the top surface of her clothing. John Bonet's body was covered in a blanket. She died of asphyxiation by ligature with a rope that was attached to a broken handle from one of Patsy Ramsey's paintbrushes. The rope was turned into a garrote, a, a ligature, which is a rope strangling, and attached to the paintbrush, and it was also loosely attached to her hands. She was wearing a shirt with a heart on the front that she had worn the night before, white PJs and white underwear, PJ bottoms and underwear. In the underwear was urine and what appeared to be drops of blood. She had pigtails in her hair. She was still wearing a single cross necklace around her neck. On her heart was drawn on her hand, the palm of her hand was drawn a heart. Her hair was caught in the, the ligature. She died of asphyxiation from the ligature and cranial injuries from an apparent blow to the head. There were lacerations and bruising hematoma in her vagina consistent with digital penetration suggesting that a man did not abuse her, although he could have digital means fingers, but typically you'll see a man sexually assault a child with full-blown sex. Why do I say that? Because her hymen was intact. And if Jean-Benet Ramsey had been molested by a man in full-blown sex, she would have no longer had a hymen intact. What is it that seems to draw us to this senseless killing when there are so many others? Like a whodunit. It's really very strange. It's a real mystery and it's very sad. A little girl found killed in her own home. We want to know who's involved, who their suspects are. And uh, I think that's, that's the whole story right there, the mystery. There's wealth and beauty. It was a beautiful child and a beautiful family. There's a lot of money in that family, and I would, I would just keep it shut, you know? Why is it um, it's so sad? There is fear. It's, it's kind of scary. I think a lot of people with children here in Boulder are really scared. Police say it was a one-time occurrence, but it was a violent death. Jean Bonnet's skull was fractured. She was sexually assaulted. Her hands were bound, her mouth taped shut. She was strangled with a rope. How could anyone, a human, do anything to harm a child? It's really disturbing. And now there are disturbing crime scene photographs a supermarket tabloid is running. It is something that means a great deal to the Boulder community. But the reality is that we are, uh, this situation is a curiosity to the rest of the country. And quite frankly, it is a, it, it is a sick curiosity in some ways. Here in Boulder, there is compassion. Not everyone is going to sell the tabloid, including a major supermarket chain and the owner of this newsstand. I think if it was my little girl or your little girl, um, this is not what you want to see. Maybe it's the thought of someone possibly getting away with murder that disturbs us. Maybe this just seems too unbelievable. That there are some very, very um, obvious problems with the story that we've heard. Little girls are the innocent, pure thing in the universe. And whenever something happens to them, it shakes our belief in the uh, innocence and purity of the world. In a case full of plot twists, there was even intrigue about how the book was being released. The publisher ordered stores not to sell The Death of Innocence until noon. It was stamped right on the boxes. 
Actually, even Titanic wasn't even that strict, which amazes me. Brad Hallberg manages media play on the 16th Street Mall. The Ramsey arrival is prominently displayed in the book section and at the front entrance upstairs. During our hour-long visit, most people gave the book only a passing glance. But Linda Eggers bought a copy, eagerly handing over the $25. My daughter and I are very interested. We've actually been to the house, walked through the yard, looked in the windows when it first happened. Now she reads and watches everything she can about the case, hoping for answers. What had been going on maybe in their lives beforehand, like with Mr. Ramsey? Was there somebody who was angry with him? Was there a lot of people in the house that could have had access to keys? Just things that you've heard different things on. I want to hear what they have to say about those things. Book shopper Becky Emery has heard enough about the Ramseys. I think they should have just gone to the authorities and told their story instead of making money off of it. Most of the people I've talked to are appalled by the whole thing. So, slow sales at media play, but just down the street, Barnes & Nobles reports one buyer scooped up almost all its copies. And for now, this location is so... Interesting also in the home, the note, the ransom note. Now, who would come into someone's home, a burglar, and write, what, a three-page ransom note? It sounded like a fifth-grade girl had written it. <laughs> that was trying to write about intrigue and kidnapping and ransoms. But what's so interesting is not only did they use a notepad from in the home and Patsy Ramsey's pen, they had a practice note. So the person obviously was not afraid they would be detected, felt quite at home in the Ramsey's home because they could kick back and write a full-blown ransom note, scratch that and write another. Three pages. Interesting. You had said recently in an interview that you were willing to take a lie detector test, and apparently the Boulder police are now saying, let's set it up. Will you do it? We have. We were asked, had we been asked to take a lie detector test, we said no. We were asked, would we? We said certainly we would. Uh, we would expect it to be fair, and we would expect the results to be public. And then you would take, well, by fair, how, what's the determination of that, Patsy? Well, I think it has to be someone of um, national repute, national repute, FBI man. independent, you know, a professional polygrapher. You know, we, we, we've been told that um, that uh, this is a dangerous thing to take a lie detector test because they're they're uh, subjective science. They're not uh, allowed in court uh, as, as evidence. Agree. In Colorado, even if both sides agree, uh, they're not allowed in court. In the right hands, but though, in the right, we have nothing to hide. And if they work, and if it will advance the cause of finding the killer of our daughter, we'll do it. Simple. The ransom note. Of course, there was no ransom because this note was left asking for one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars, the exact amount of a bonus that John Ramsey had just gotten. Who would know that? But th it wasn't a ransom note. It appeared to be one. In in exchange for $118,000, you'll get John Bonet back. But then they went, ah, forget it. I'll just kill her and leave her in the basement. So it made absolutely no sense. It was such a staged scene by someone that obviously was in no rush to you know, to stage the scene. The ransom note said, use your good southern common sense to John Ramsey. Who would use that? Who would say something like, try to grow a brain in a ransom note? This was not a hastily written note. It was very in-depth. It was a fantasy note. It was not real. Who took the time to do that? What happened that day? December 26th? 6th. 
We were planning to leave for uh, Charlevoix, which is, we have a summer cottage up there, we did have. Uh, we were going to rendezvous with our older kids for a, a first ever family Christmas all together in, in Michigan. We were to leave early that morning, uh, fly to, to uh, Michigan. Morning after Christmas. Morning after. What happened that night? What's the first thing? That, what's the first thing you remember, Patsy? The first thing I remember is waking up, getting dressed hurriedly, going downstairs, and uh, putting a few things together to pack to take on the plane. It's about what time? It's early morning, before daylight. You're up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what happens? Then I go down the spiral staircase and. There on one of the runs of the stair is the three-page ransom note. And no one has entered the house. The door isn't open. You read the note. I don't know that. What did you do? Oh, you. Yeah. Well, I hurriedly read it. You know, I and didn't take long to understand what was happening. And I ran back upstairs and pushed open her bedroom door, and she was gone. Did you think it? You knew it was her by the note, right? Well, it said your daughter. Yeah. You were not concerned about Burke? Did you check Burke? Yes. We checked, we checked Burke really him. quickly. Yes. You brought the note to John? I don't remember. I tell you, you just, you know, that you morning is so note? chaotic. You don't? remember exactly, but... Well, it was, it was... Uh, I started screaming, there's a note, you know. And, and you look in John Benet's room, she's not there. What's the first thing you do? Larry, we don't remember. This is three years ago. We've been through this a hundred times. You wrote a book about it, so I mean, you must have said... We, we outlined it in the book. Uh, Basically. I felt like I'd been kicked by a horse. The most horrible feeling. If you ever had that pang of missing your child in a shopping center just for a moment, yeah. that pain hit me squarely between the eyes, and it never left. It was a horrible feeling. You don't know what to do first. You don't know what to do. You just... Panicking. Call the police right away? We did. Call the police right 911 away. 911 or? 911. Right? And what did they do? They, uh, a uniformed police officer arrived uh, relatively quickly. And um, I said, I handed him the note. I said, my daughter's been taken. Uh, he said, gee, aren't you, sh you don't think she just ran away? And I said, for heaven's sake, she's six years old. No, she didn't just run away. Um, no sign of foul play at this point. We weren't looking. We were concerned. I mean, there was no foul play yeah. in her room. We no. didn't go she back into her room. Right. Right. She was not in. So what did the officer do? Um, asked us to go into one room, put us in one room. And he yeah. searched the house? We don't, I don't know. Don't know what he did. I don't know what he did. Well, this, this is hot. When was the first time you saw your daughter? After all of this, you got the note. How long after this did you see John Benet? When did I find her? Yeah. Well, I found her uh, later yes, that morning. The hours? Hours. Oh. hours. Well, we, during those hours, you thinking she's been kidnapped? Oh, absolutely. We thought we were dealing with a kidnapping. Fearing the worst. Police arrived. Absolutely. You don't know whether you're going to see your daughter in an hour, in a day, in a year, in 10 years, or never. It's a horrible feeling. Now, interesting. There was an open window in the basement. Below the window was a suitcase. That is not where the suitcases were commonly stored. There was also a scuff mark on the wall. Also was found a footprint to a, a high-tech type hiking boot, which could not be linked back to any known shoes in the home. Just right off the top, there are glaring problems with the police investigation. And I don't like coming down on the police. They're here to help us, not hurt us. But keep in mind, this was the only homicide in Boulder that year. Um, first of all, police told John Ramsey to search his own home. Problem. They did not immediately separate John and Patsy Ramsey and question them. And then it became a big tug of war about whether they would cooperate with police and, and be questioned. There's just so much drama surrounding them coming in for questioning. You know, maybe they felt that they had already been targeted. And so they, they didn't want to go down that road. Maybe that's why they didn't do it. 
But instead of immediately separating them and questioning them, it became a high drama to, you know, question them, interrogate them, and get a statement from them later on. Um, not only that, as I recall, police let family, friends, you know, everybody was just pouring in and out of the home the whole morning for hours, hours. A contaminated crime scene. Even if evidence had been found, the contamination argument would surface at trial. If I were a resident of Boulder, I would tell my friends to keep Your baby's close to you. There's someone out there. Then there were public statements. I recall Patsy Ramsey stating that she wondered if this had been a vendetta against John Ramsey's company, which makes no sense whatsoever, that the city wasn't safe, that everyone should protect their children. Immediately the next day, the mayor gave their own press conference saying the town was safe and there was not a killer on the loose as Patsy Ramsey had said the day before. The case was so bungled from the get-go. Uh, I mean, even if they ever did charge someone, it, it's so highly contaminated and um, compromised, I don't think it could ever be proven. Now, here's an interesting note. Over 300 media were in town covering the story in Boulder. Why did America latch on to Jean Monnet's life and death? I think possibly because there were so many reams and reams of video of her that you, you felt like you got to know her. You saw so much video, so many pictures. You heard so much about it. And who couldn't, who wouldn't love Jean Monnet Ramsey? Also, their family seemed so picture perfect. You know, John Ramsey, many people believe, is handsome, he's successful, he's got a lovely wife, um, she's beautiful, the daughter's beautiful, the son is smart, you know, everything. Beautiful home, the American dream, you know, went straight to crap. It really is a testament to the courage of Alex Hunter, the district attorney, to stand up and to fulfill his oath of office as a prosecutor and to not bring charges that would have resulted in a gross miscarriage of justice because innocent people would have been charged with a crime they did not commit. We then learn about a secret grand jury that had apparently been investigating the case for over a year. At the end of that grand jury investigation, it was deemed there was insufficient evidence to go forward with charging anyone. The case was ultimately closed. There have been reports that touch DNA has cleared all members of the Ramsey family. And the district attorney offered an apology to John Ramsey.